Hey everyone, um, so yeah, this is a very long overdue tutorial um, looking at uh, some of the stuff that I do in Procreate. I've not got around to doing it just because technologically it's a little bit um, difficult. In fact, I'm going to screen record here, just in case nothing is usable from this camera. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I just basically need to get some way of rigging a camera overhead so you can kind of see what I was doing. Um, it's okay straight to screen recording it, but um, sometimes you kind of need to see what I'm doing here. So I've kind of got this weird rig, which actually kind of makes it quite difficult to work with, but we're going to do our best to, uh, yeah, to, to make this work. So uh, I thought I'd look at the thing that I did um, the other day. Uh, it's just a sort of... Spaceship. Um, nothing particularly complicated going on in terms of the geometry and stuff. Did it in Blender. Um, one of the things that I did do, so I rendered out um, the spaceship um, and the ground here that was all done in Blender. And then inside Blender as well, I was using the um, line art modifier uh, to kind of outline the outside of the model with a grease pencil um, thing. It's a really useful way of just creating these um, highlights you can see um, here. Um, and for some reason I can get them to work uh, as a transparent PNG. Um, so I just rendered it out and then I've used um, the screen blending mode. Um, I will say that everything like here that I'm doing in Procreate can totally be done in other software, just this is what I tend to work in, but um, yeah, this is a sort of general tutorial for anyone who does any post-processing stuff on their images, just to kind of look at the kind of things that I do. Um, so yeah, let's let's get stuck in. So yeah, th these white lines here, I tend to find that um, up until recently I used to draw a lot of these in by hand, and I still will, um, but this kind of just gives me a really nice starting point. Um, and like, I think this is a little bit over the top, so um, one of the things I'll be doing is like actually getting rid of some of the stuff. So um, I tend to use quite a few of the same brushes. I use these brushes kind of most of the time. Um, this is just a soft, um, yeah, soft uh, eraser basically. So if I start, you can see here, um, I'm adjusting brush size on the left and opacity of the brush here. Um, same controls in Photoshop essentially, but um, yeah, I thought I'd demonstrate that just so you know what I'm doing on the left here. Um, yeah, and so I would probably just start kind of probably removing some of these white lines from the center and just, um, yeah, keeping some of these edge ones don't want to go too crazy with it. Um, yeah, that's probably about right. Um, like some of these lines here don't really make sense, so um, I'll get rid of those. Um, yeah, and just kind of these like little highlights here. The reason for the white highlights is I find that it kind of feels a little bit like the kind of strokes that someone would make if they were sketching, um, and it makes the image kind of feel a little bit more like a drawn um, painting essentially so it's kind of a quick way of kind of making your 3d renders kind of feel a little bit more hand-drawn um, and yeah often one of the next things I'll do is kind of like um, go in and start like painting in a couple more um, often around edges um, nice sort of thin brush um, I'm just the good thing about um, working in Photoshop is if you draw a straight line and you hold it it will automatically sort of become like this completely straight line, which is not what you always want. Like sometimes you want uh, you want it to feel a little bit more hand drawn, but this is quite tough because normally I'm kind of leaning over the iPad, and right now I'm having to kind of sit quite far away from it. Um, yeah, kind of like draw these in um, often as well, like in places where um, there's an important bit of geometry, but it kind of like will fall. Um, in front of something else and, you, and, and and may not become particularly obvious like you know like an edge like that but I want to add a little bit in too just so the eye can sort of tell the difference between where the edge is um, and often like you 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 draw these in um, and they won't work and then you'll take them out it kind of is a little bit of trial and error as to knowing like which um, which yeah, which areas kind of warrant having kind of like white highlights on. Um, I also notice I've done this in a separate layer, so I can control this layer individually. 
Um, sometimes I'll go for a stronger kind of opacity to begin with, and then I can just sort of like uniformly bring everything down. Um, yeah, it's kind of up to you really here, what, what kind of thing you want to go for. Um, that looks too strong to me, so I'm I'll leave that there for now, I might come back to it in a little bit. Um, the other thing you'll notice about this is it's transparent PNG, this render, so um, the, uh, there's no sky or anything on it. Um, that's because I quite like to add, um, add in my own skies, uh, skies later, so let's, um, yeah, let's, okay, uh, yeah, so this is just an um, uh, image of a sunset that I, I got from uh, Photo Batch Library uh, that I downloaded at port. Um, but you can find loads of these free online and stuff as well, or take your own, which is even more fun. Um, so that will import uh, on top of everything else, but Flytrop is now behind here. He uh, kind of brings everything else to the front. Um, now, obviously, the lighting doesn't match um, particularly well here. There's no like kind of strong orange light on the spaceship or anything, so um, my plan was always to kind of get rid of this bottom section so we can... So we're just really looking for this texture here, and still this light doesn't quite match, so I'd maybe um, go into the layer properties and just have a quick play with the colour balance. Saturation. We can just lose that a little bit. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, so um, yeah, that would be sort of like the next step. I think just making sure that I got the right sky on there. You can experiment. Like you'd be surprised how um, well different sky textures work. Um, like quite easily. It's not like a particularly difficult. Uh, thing as long as your sky is kind of roughly the same, um, same thing. Um, cool. Okay. So um, next up, I would probably this is a little trick that I find again is quite good for making your renders not feel help your renders not um, and your pictures not feel like they're renders. Um, and again, this is kind of a little bit of trial and error, but um, often what I'll do is I'll take a smudge tool. Um, similar sort of shapes to that razor that I had before, nice and small, um, keep the opacity low, and just start sort of um, smudging some of the areas of the image here so that they're slightly less uniform, especially when you're doing things with like dunes, um, or anything that you want to kind of feel windy, like kind of smudging these areas kind of gives that feeling of the sort of like dust particulates and stuff in the air. Um, Again, quite easy to go too far with it. Um, yeah, you see there, it's kind of like bringing up these these areas and making them feel a little bit more uh, organic and slightly less rendered. And I do the same, not quite so much on this image because the camera doesn't feel too far away from what we're looking at. Um, but often, if you want that feeling of there being like atmosphere in between, you know, you and, you and the, the image, I'll, um, you know, do a little bit more of this, but you can see as I start sort of like um, you know, smudging some of these edges, kind of just helps the model kind of just sit in the world a little bit more, makes it feel like, again, a little bit more painterly, um, you know, a little less like everything's kind of perfectly, um, you know, often I'll be doing it to like, yeah, these, these kind of hard, um, hard edges, kind of just gives that impression of almost like this paint strokes. Um, definitely something I do in the sky as well. Um, like again, this sky's fairly sort of um, dark, so it doesn't it doesn't need a huge amount, but yeah, that's something, um, something that I will often do. I'm probably pushing things a little bit too far again here just to demonstrate for you guys. Um, but yeah, it's easy enough to kind of walk backwards. Uh, let's do that. Nice. 
Cool, okay. Um, yeah, all right. Let me put that on these guys. Down here. It's funny, it looks a lot brighter on the um, on the video than it does on, on my iPad screen, so some of this stuff might look even more obvious for you guys. Um, cool, okay. That would be, um, yeah, probably my next, that, that would be what I would do next. And then after here, this is kind of where you start having fun. Um, you can start kind of adding things to it. And what I'll probably do here is more than I probably would actually do, just so I can show you guys a range of different techniques and stuff um, and how I use brushes. Um, but yeah, maybe I wouldn't go quite as far as I, as I am ordinarily. So, um, what might be nice? I really like this brush here. It kind of gives you, um, kind of gives you this effect of, um, it's kind of like a hard center with like a soft edge. It's really good for things like spotlights. So if I select, um, oops, I select this color just by holding this down and selecting it. What I can do, just start making those guys a little bit more. sort of fills in these gaps, just makes everything feel a little bit more, um, a little bit more organic. Um, again, what I'd probably do here is give an example of like going a little bit too far and then walking it backwards. Um, walking it backwards later. So if I go into the opacity of this layer here, I can sort of bring it down and then sort, sort of dive it up um, in and out. Um, another thing that I'll probably do in this layer as well, um, if I feel like it, is just having a little play with um, uh, secondary lighting that, that wasn't necessarily built into the um, into the original model. And again, once you know that you can do this stuff, you know you don't have to think too much about it in, in Blender. It kind of saves you time in Blender because you're like, okay, well I don't need to put a little light in there. I can just I can just paint uh, something like that in. Um, again, you see, like, we're getting that kind of effect of kind of like a slightly warmer, sort of hotter center. Um, really good for anything sort of Star Wars-y. You kind of see a lot of this stuff in Star Wars art. Um, another good thing you can do with this as well, I mean, you can, you, you can have, like, lights like that, you know, really, <laughs> really accentuate it, but, um, yeah, not, not for this one, I don't think. Um, Okay, cool. Well, that's sort of yeah how I'd maybe do a bit of additional lighting. Um, next, often I'm a big fan of uh, hanging cables and that kind of thing. Just a little bit of extra bump that again I didn't do in Blender, and because I, I know I can add it easily here. Um, so uh, what I will do is select a color that's roughly um, you know kind of like looking for the kind of shadow areas. Um, you know, maybe down here. Um, let's create a new. Opacity all the way up, we'll make sure we're quite small. Um, you can see here, like we can start. Um, um, yeah, we can start. Yeah, painting these in. Um, the other good thing again is if you hold down the um, the stroke, um, you can control the direction and the shape and that kind of thing. But often, again, it's kind of nice to uh, you know have a little bit of free hand. Again, if you're changing, just ever so slightly changing the size of, um, of the brush as you do this, you kind of get that feeling of like different sizes of cables, um, different lengths, that kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, if you really want to get into it. Another good thing actually to do with this is if you put this layer behind your other layers and then everything kind of falls behind your model, you don't get kind of like weird overlaps and stuff. Um, but yeah, you can, you know, you can go in there now and give bits of extra detail to these cables um, just so they don't feel uniform all the way around um, again often I won't go into this amount of detail um, but yeah good to show you guys um, one of the kinds of cables you get like you know sometimes like the kind of cables that um, just sit on top of things like that you can start giving, um, you know, the, 
the kind of silhouette of the um, of the spaceship a little bit more of an interesting feel. Um, I'm always looking for places where like you can sort of like have a start point and an end point for a cable to hang from. Um, and then we can try something down here. I wonder whether it will be a little bit too. too obvious, but I do like them up here, around there, maybe, maybe down here, let's have a play with it. <laughs> Again, just adding detail where the cables sort of like, in the areas that the cables like originate from, just because that's where they would be sort of hooked on. Yeah, they make no sense, especially on spaceships. I think um, I get a lot of comments on Reddit and Twitter and some people going, well, why would a spaceship have hanging cables? Um, fuck you, right? That's why. <laughs> and they look cool. Um, cool, okay. So yeah, already that's kind of beginning to look a little bit more interesting. Um, next, I guess I would look at, and again, maybe not so much a model that's in so much shadow like this, but... Um, yeah, like we could certainly have a look at um, adding um, just some more, um, yeah, surface like colour blemishes and that kind of thing. Um, I find, yeah, again, I sort of have this kind of wrist brush. Um, there are lots of brushes like it though. Um, just a kind of rough feeling, kind of broken up brush. Um, low opacity. Uh, sort of normal size, much lower opacity than that. Um, and you can start sort of like scraping. I actually have a setting on here so the brush will swap colours at random, um, which is sometimes good, sometimes bad. But if you want it just to be white, then you kind of need to set both versions. I like that. Um, and you can start, yeah, just having a play. Probably starting too big in between these kind of panels here. Yeah, white's always good, or something darker. Um, I'll start kind of painting in dirt and that kind of thing. Um, if you want kind of slightly more rusty feel, kind of like a deep, deep orange. Um, a bit more opacity. You can see here on those edges now. That's making a, a bigger difference. Again, this is more obvious on a model that's. Um, slightly brighter. Um, I wouldn't necessarily go into that much detail on something like this, which is already quite dark. Um, but yeah, can can be cool. Um, another little trick I found actually was um, just having a play with sort of blending modes um, in regards to lettering. So if we decided we wanted to add some text, uh, actually, I'm gonna make gold again. Um, the colour to white. Um, yep, that's fine. When in doubt, go for uh, Helvetica. Um, if I just take a uh, big letter H, uh, what are we going doing? I don't know, that. And then if we distort it, kind of line it up roughly, possibly, with part of the ship. Um, let's try and line up those edges. Yeah, what we can do is like start having a play with the blending mode, and um, say something like that um, could give us. If we start like rubbing out the areas where the geometry sort of changes. Um, get rid of that, for example. Um, we actually start. Um, it starts to kind of look like, um, yeah, where you know where actual paint would be. Um, and again, you can sort of continue to kind of rub out areas where there wouldn't be um, anything. Although the blending mode is doing quite a lot of work here. Let's say to get that area. Um, 
And then even if you want to get more detail with it, start, you know, like these areas where there's these pipes. So a little bit. Um, and you can maybe lose this whole, whole section. Um, yeah, and then um, change the um, sort of texture of your eraser and kind of the opacity and stuff. And you can start sort of rubbing that out um, so it kind of looks worn. Kind of start getting rid of bits. Um, and then you've always got the opacity, so you can always like have a play with that. But yeah, that's a way of sort of like creating, you know, if you want that feeling of like there being like straight lines or something painted on. On, on the image, uh, on the spaceship. Um, yeah, it's a good way of working. Um, and then, like, often I'll just be kind of going through my brushes and going, okay, what would be quite cool to have? Um, you know, sometimes something silly like one of these brushes um, can be quite fun. Um, let me lay it. There we go. Um, it's difficult to line up. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is very over the top for this picture in particular. But, um, yeah, that's definitely something you can play with. Um, yeah, and uh, like at this point, like I, I wouldn't be a million miles away um, from from a kind of like taking it to the next. Um, yeah, to, to the next uh, part of the process, which would be sending it to uh, my color grader or image editor of choice, which um, there are lots of these out here. I just happen to use um, this particular one. But, um, um, yeah, I really like this software, but again, there's loads of these out there. And if you use Photoshop, you can do it in Photoshop and you can even load 3D LUTs into Photoshop and stuff. So um, in some ways that's easier, but yeah, I, I like this. It's got um, some really good auto um, options on it. So there's like a machine learning um, option up here, which basically does like a machine learning grade, um, which for this is way over the top, but sometimes can actually be really, really good. Um, and yeah, it's got all these kind of like LUTs um, that I've kind of uh, made over the years, all these sort of like presets. Um, and yeah, I can kind of go through these and um, yeah, start kind of going, oh, okay, maybe that's close to where we want to go. Um, and then you've got all of these settings here, um, and I can then start kind of like controlling the um, yeah, c c controlling the, the settings that kind of go into that preset, um, just as I would anything else. Um, and I can't remember what I did when I first the last time I did this this image, um, but uh, yeah, we can have a little play. Like I'll often be trying to sort of. Um, just make everything pop and stand out a little bit more. Um, there are these options down here, like for sharpening. Um, I quite like to sharpen my images. I quite like them to look um, a little bit grainy and sharp. You've also got a grain option here, which you can turn up. You're not gonna be able to see this very well, um, but uh, yeah, it's kind of like, it can be quite fun if you want things to look a little bit degraded and grainy. Um, I also quite like the fade. Um, the fade setting, oops, the fade setting here, um, which sort of like takes the contrast out of the blacks, but again, you're not gonna be able to see massively um, what, what's going on there. Uh, let's turn this sharpening down a touch. Um, yeah, and then you've got you know your color wheels and stuff, so you can start um, yeah playing with you know finessing those colors, um, a general sort of saturation. Um, I actually quite like this image in black and white. I think it works quite nicely, but. Um, yeah, there's some fun colors in there as well. Um, yeah, and you know, I'll just do like a, a bit of a finesse here. And then you can see the before and after. And again, um, well, not great on camera, but you can really tell the difference um, between the, you know, the before you edit it and after. Um, yeah, so that's essentially like a lot of the process. This looks slightly different to the last time that I edited this picture. Um, but yeah, I think it's, Kind of some of the most fun that you can have uh, doing this. Like I really enjoy this kind of post-process section, um, 
and it can really you know it learning this side of things really helps when it comes to blender because you know you'll find that you can start painting things in that you would have spent you know time actually building in blender um and if you know what you're going to be sort of like you know smudging and kind of putting out of focus and um playing around with often yeah you can kind of let go of some stuff in blender which is uh, really good for time saving you know we did a lot of work there in um not a huge amount of time um you know i think that was about half an hour so yeah uh i would say yeah you know have fun with this stuff and you don't need an ipad you know there's lots of free photo editing software that work in exactly the same way um i do like having the pencil i would say you know some sort of graphics tablet would be um necessary but um i know people who don't use them as well so hope that's been useful and uh, yeah i'll hopefully do more of these because i think um it wasn't quite as difficult as i was expecting it to be so that's good but yeah bye for now